So here we are at the beginning of a new year. There has been a lot of leaks and rumors that have come out. Some of them I have addressed. Others I have been saving for a moment such as this. In this video, we are going to talk about what you can expect from consoles in 2020. More specifically, what the big three should be doing holiday 2020. Welcome to the channel, my fellow weebs and gamers. I am your host, Ryofu, and you are watching The Gaming Harbinger. Today, we are going to take a look at what all three companies need to do for holiday 2020. So let's start off with the easiest one, Sony. Why is Sony the easiest, you might say? Sony got games, cuz. Sony got games. Sony has also a hundred million plus install base of the PlayStation 4. A round of applause for them. Job well done. Job well done. They also released a solid VR headset and it's gotten pretty good reviews and is known as the budget VR set that isn't too shabby. Can they even screw up anything for next gen? Your knee jerk reaction might be not a chance. Sony may have stumbled with pricing and some comments back in the PlayStation 3 era, but make no mistake, PlayStation 3 sales eventually hit 87 million. That's pretty good. That means every Sony console, excluding the handheld Vita, has been a smash success. The people love Sony. They feel they can trust them. So what should Sony do in order to maintain this? Yes, continue to have first person studios make amazing games, sure, sure, sure. Yes, have a powerful console, but make sure it's affordable. Yes, yes, those are obvious stuff, right? Obvious. But let's talk about the less obvious things that could actually hurt their reputation. If there is a big multi-plat game that has potential for crossplay, don't fight it, Sony. Don't fight it. The people have spoken and they look at you as being greedy if you keep them from playing with their Xbox and Nintendo homies. I actually don't ride with the people on this. I think it was just business to say no to crossplay when you are top dog. I get it, it makes sense. But the community as a whole has spoken and they want their crossplay. All right, so the reason why I didn't make a video when the Sony dev kits were leaking and there was like, oh, what's going on? Is this what the system's gonna look like? I thought everyone knew dev kits look crazy and probably won't be indicative of what the actual console will look like. I was wrong. Some people really thought this was how the console was going to look. Now it's possible some aspects of it would look similar, but usually the final product looks way different. Next is the censoring of fan servicey weeb games. And you might be like, that's not true, Ryofu. Oh, yes, it is. I wonder if the future Call of Duty games or Grand Theft Auto games will get censored. I'll answer that for you. They won't. Business as usual. The thing is, the Weeby games have a smaller audience, a smaller demographic, and somehow they also bring about a small demographic, a small minority of people that rage against them. So Sony feels they should listen to their US counterpart and take out stuff that makes them feel uncomfortable. The unfortunate reality is that these niche Japanese companies are mainly working with Nintendo and Sony. If they feel their game will be heavily edited, they will turn to Nintendo, bottom line. Every now and then we'll see an, a weeb game drop on the Xbox, but mostly they are going to turn to another Japanese company. 
I don't think this is something that would like destroy Sony's game market, but it could hurt their image amongst Japanese consumers and weebs. Come on, Sony, love us. Don't judge us. Next, they need to keep pushing forward on VR. From what information is public, Sony is a couple of steps ahead of VR on consoles. They need to maintain this, especially for Half-Life Alex. I mean, this could be a game changer for PlayStation 5 VR. Next on the chopping block is Nintendo. Right now, the Switch is on fire, and rightfully so. Such an ingenious concept that was definitely influenced by the Wii U. Even though the system is in a time period of its own, it will have to compete with the next gen consoles. And I'm just gonna make a small disclaimer here. I get that it came out in 2017, but the Wii U was a part of the Xbox One PlayStation 4 generation. It just came out before them. Because the Wii is the one that's actually a part of the 360 PlayStation 3 generation. And I just feel like I have to make that disclaimer because some people try to argue this and I guess you could say that, okay, the Switch is kind of coming at the end of Xbox One, PlayStation 4 era, and it's going into next gen. But I mean, the reality is that Wii was a part of the 360, PlayStation 3 era, and the Wii U was the start of the Xbox One, PlayStation 4 era. And I feel like, I don't know why, that's such a debate for some reason. Anyways, so with that in mind, I am going to offer an idea. Nintendo should release the Switch Pro in 2020. I am saying this to say they should do this. The Nintendo Switch Pro is still a rumor. It may not happen, but it should. This is what is needed for Nintendo to compete with next-gen consoles in 2020. The 720p screen can stay, but maybe less bezel. Upscaling to 4K isn't a necessity, but it would be nice. I think the most important thing, however, would be to have better optimization, better performance. The battery life would have to be equivalent of the version two of the original Switch. We would have to have that. The next step would be to release a sequel to the Nintendo Switch in 2022 or 2023. Oddly enough, People have been referring to Nintendo's quote-unquote next console as the Switch 2, which I find quite interesting. Nintendo has always came up with a new idea every generation, so them making a sequel to the Switch would be very odd. But I think most of us are in agreement that this needs to happen, and there's nothing showing that this is really what Nintendo is going to do, but in my opinion, this is what they should do. Give us a beefier Switch in 2020, and that should hold you over until you can release your sequel to the Switch. This Switch Pro, by the way, can't be more than 400. And, and this is where things can get a little spicy. 349 would be even better, but I can't imagine this happening because regular Switch would have to drop to 249. I think this would actually be super competitive on their part, but why, if you're Nintendo, why would you drop the price of your Switch Lite, which is pretty new, and the original Switch? People are buying Switch Lite at 200. People are buying the regular Switch at 300. Why would you do a price drop? The last thing I think Nintendo should work on is something that's been an issue for a while now, and that's the Joy-Con drift. This is the thorn in Nintendo's side. Fix this, the Switch is near perfection. So last, and certainly not least, let's talk about Microsoft. I saved this one for last because there's a lot of moving pieces in this, and it's a little multifaceted. So Microsoft is in a tough place. It really is a moment of truth for their gaming division. 
I say this because with last generation, Microsoft had to pump the brakes early and regroup, which they did. It goes without saying that Microsoft wasn't as successful this generation as they were in the previous. However, there has been a drastic change in how they handle things ever since 2014. Microsoft has really put their money where their mouth is and has invested in cloud gaming, backwards compatibility, like all the way, very impressive stuff on that part, acquiring first party developers, and just making conscious efforts to provide more consumer friendly deals like the Xbox Game Pass. And now we know what the console is going to look like. We know the name, which is odd. But you know, Microsoft has never been good at naming consoles. Let's just keep it 100. Microsoft has everything lined up to be a much bigger contender next generation. The bottom line is they are making all the right decisions right now. But is it too late? You are not going to win over someone that's been supporting Sony for four generations. But maybe you could win over those 360 owners that bought a PlayStation 4. Maybe you can release a few AAA masterpieces that are not Halo, Gears, or Forza. Maybe you can kinda fade away that 2013 reveal. Just like no one blinks at the PlayStation 3 reveal or look back on the PSN hack of 2011. As time goes on, people, their memory fades. So eventually, hopefully that's what will happen with the whole Don Matrick thing. And really, let's be real. Let that man breathe. Quit bringing him up. It's it's done and done. He's not, He hasn't been a part of Microsoft in forever. Let him, let the man move on. Jeez. So there's a lot of moving pieces going on with Microsoft. So while they are doing well rebuilding the brand's reputation, there are so many things going on at once that they need to just nail all of them. I personally think the form factor of Series X is fine, but we still don't know price. I think 500 is the most it can be. Lockhart, maybe 350? So if the Series X is 600, that would be a hard sell, even if it is a beast. But the other factor is Sony's price and specs are also a, a determining factor. Microsoft could nail everything on paper, but Sony just decides, hey, we're gonna take a bigger loss than normal on the console, and boom, Sony has a strong advantage. Microsoft also needs those acquired companies to make a few amazing games. And I did say amazing. They can't just be good. They have to be amazing. They need a, a Last of Us or a Bloodborne. This is actually an important thing that needs to happen. Really strong exclusives. Hopefully they can deliver it this time around. But I will say everything is lining up to be a better generation for Xbox. As I'm sure most of you are aware, there was a point when the new Xbox was weaker than the PlayStation 5. And now just recently we've heard that the Xbox Series X is going to be more powerful than the PlayStation 5. Look, look, listen, just kidding. But it's too early. We don't even have all the specs for both of these systems. So... Just don't engage in the tomfoolery. It's not even worth it. I'm just not going to even pay attention to these rumors until we have something official. All right, boys and girls, that's going to do it for me. Please let me know in the comments what you think. Is Sony set to dominate another generation? Is Microsoft going to come out swinging? Or is it just too late? Are gamers already saddled in on who they like? Or maybe you are not excited at all about Sony and Microsoft and just feel content playing your lovely Nintendo Switch. Please let me know. As for myself, I look forward to 2020. They told us consoles were over in 2013. And look where we are now. 
Anyways, I will see you in the next video. Happy New Year.